I talk a lot about remembering all my lives, which there's only one life, so I remember life, and I know life, put it that way. But I remember being so many things that you'll see what I mean. It's almost like if someone was to say, I once played Little League Baseball when I was a boy. I play Little League Baseball now. Okay, so I play Little League Baseball. That's happening out there somewhere. Someone could say that, so I am somewhere doing that. My present moment in time, I can't say that, but at one point in time I could say I, that and actually be honest in that moment of time because that was suitable for what I was doing. I've been so many different shaman and so many different Apache tribe leaders or every different name that people call it, it doesn't even matter anymore. So when people ask me what it was like to be this guy, that guy, other guys, this guy, those guys, it, it's like trying to remember who Dan Alexander was when he worked at McDonald's at 15 and have to remember what the menu was. Like, that's how everything works. You don't remember anything from your first job. Maybe when you went back and looked at it, maybe if you really stewed over your mind and tried, but why? Why would you? You don't. So when you die and you leave your body, you come back. If you want to be a human being again, playing this kind of version of game on this kind of planet, you can do that. But you really can keep your consciousness and do whatever you want when you die. But most people don't know that, and they're so afraid that during this lifetime you have a little bit of what we call time, between to decide whether or not this is what you want to do because this is the, sort of the best kind of being you can be. Not just a human being that looks like us with our gangly arms and legs, but someone who can make their own choices and actually control things with their mind and, and be able to be conscious of their doings. Not an animal, what an animal seems to be to us. They're conscious of their own doings in their own way. And, and to that level... That's what they think is right. So when they die, they will go through a cycle of incarnations as different animals in those ways. Not always the same deer, not always the same whatever, but they'll work their way up into like a dog, a cat, become into a, a present mind state where they remember something more familiar and then they'll move into a baby. And then they'll grow up through there and they'll go through adult lives and babies and adult lives and babies and adult lives for lots and lots of times until they become the next being. And we'll get to that. But people don't understand it and it sounds too woo-woo for anyone. And also you don't feel the way we feel as people. You don't have, you're not in the middle of the spectrum. You're not on the green planet. You're not here in the middle of the color rainbow that we use in our, like green isn't the color we see it. Green is just the center of the spectrum, of all spectrums. So if you had different eyes, let's say the, the center was red and it went around correspondingly wrapped around and red was in the center and green was up one and, and, and they all moved up one and up one until they were wrapped around and purple was below red and that kind of thing. But if you saw what I mean with that, then you know that there's colorblind animals, you know there's fish, they don't see the same, you know that animals, we say that flies and spiders have like 10 views and 100 views, you know what I mean? Let's think about that and fish with that eyes on the side of their head and horses, the way other animals' eyes are placed Different views come from different yous. So when you really have experienced that, when someone says, well, what was this person's life like? I could tell you just off the top of my head how I, Dan Alexander, would act now if I had the opportunity they had. I may not know what we say the information was given about them, but at the same time, we also don't know that anyone who's ever won a vacation on a game show has actually got the vacation or the money. Maybe some do, just so they can save face. But who's to say that lots of times there aren't actors with Jamie Foxx and the people on all these TV shows giving people hopes and dreams and things that they want you to follow along with. Let's, let's imagine that these people have these kind of jobs. Everyone's perfectly and humble. No one has any real issues that I talk about on TV because we people don't talk about that. That's what the other shows are for. So we get people hope by wanting money so bad, playing into the crowd so that you, you feel their emotions as they're having a chance of going from 750000 to $2 million or down to 300000 And when they go down to 300000 everyone goes, oh, man. And they could just say, I'll leave. 
with that much. But instead they keep going because they have more chances. But they, they play with emotions and they do that on purpose. Who's to say that those people get that $750,000 to take home just because they were on a TV show for 20 minutes? No. No. Sometimes just to save face. But other times, money's just a gimmick. It doesn't matter. They're getting people to feed into their ideas. Believe me, when I get into that and then I go back into saying I was once a, ba- a little league baseball player and I was every shaman and every mystic and every Buddha and every everything. Buddha was a baseball player. All of them. And if you don't think God was every kind of thing, he was a rapist. It was a rapist. It was flies and bugs and particles. It was. And it showed me how to do it, how to be it, how to feel it. But as a human being, trying to talk to other human beings, they don't want to hear that. Nature hears it. Nature lives by it. Everything else does but human beings. We have the ability to separate our minds and think individually. But we follow weird ideas and really tarnish and toxify ourselves horribly. And I know as many shaman and many medicine men and many chiefs, I had many times where just because I was in charge didn't mean that I always knew what was right. A lot of times it was smoking too many. A shaman would try every kind of herb, every kind of tea. They would smoke things. They would taste things. They would see. Sometimes things would end up going wrong and they would think wrong but they would still try to put safe face sometimes they'd be honest with some people I would be and I would tell people there's times where if if you knew an arrival tribe or or the white man or the 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 bad people whatever you'd want to call them those that you were against would find your things you had things set out so they would find your secrets but they were fake and you would formulate fake secrets that purposely misled them I know because I did it. I've done some really underhanded things and I've done some really decent things to try to help myself by keeping my secrets, by putting fake secrets. Some find the real ones, some find the fake ones, some don't know. Every shaman is different. Some shaman had very pure lives and lived for hundreds of years. And other shaman had very short lives and died at 35 because they tried something wrong. Or they got hooked on something and their whole tribe got hooked on stuff and their whole tribe went savage. And it happened a lot. And they got lots of flus. And when they had lots of things where the tribes were sick all the time, it was because they were eating the wrong fruits and vegetables. And they were eating the wrong kind of meats. And they were getting very sick from what they were doing. Not from... There wasn't anything that different than what we're doing now. We're doing a lot better in ways. But there are people in control that are toxifying slowly the people who can't catch on. And eventually they'll either control them or kill them. And the ones who don't want to listen, they'll just kill. Or they'll give you the, the option of control, of their control being over you, unless you resist too many times, then they'll kill you. They're going to make it robotic, or we have to tell them how we're not going to have it that way and we're all living in honest freedom. If someone comes and tries to threaten me, I, I vow that I will take care of myself because I love others and I will help them not want to come hurt me or harm me because there's nothing that I have that they aren't enabled to, entitled to, or that isn't right there for them. If they want some material things, I'm not in their way. So that's not me they're going to have a problem with. What they're going to have a problem with is their big old ego that's in front of them to keep them out of their true spiritual way. And I'm here to save them from that. I've been very worthy holy beings and I've been fake holy beings. I've been drug addict shaman I've been the healing medicine man of wonders I've been the rapist and and the killer and I've been like the hero but it doesn't matter when people don't see that they're all of those too at different times in their life depending on who they're around and when you've had so many lives and actually feel differences between each one when you've died and saw how you died and went through the whole course there's no words for it When you try to put it into words, you can only do it the best that people explain stuff. Because people are the ones that explain things best to other people. Unless those other people will just shut up and watch what nature's doing. Until they find another person, as we call them, that knows what nature's doing. Like me. And that's what I'm here for. To heal this whole universe. Finally.